Okay, in this section we're going to move on to uh, the more complex compound interest. Uh, the idea with simple interest was that you would put a s we'll just do it from a savings point of view. If you are trying to save money, you'll put money in an account and then after a certain amount of time they're going to pay you um, a set amount of interest at the very end. Uh, if you were being particularly complicated and wanted to do some like of those government T-bills, you'd put a certain amount in. They're going to give you a small amount of interest and cash at regular intervals, but it's the same amount every time um, you're paying that interest or you're getting that interest off of your initial investment and then you have a cash amount at the end. Um, the difference with compound interest is um, just like um, with some of those T-bill problems, you're getting regular payments, but instead of them paying the money to you in cash that you can just go out and spend, they're going to pay you that interest and then they're going to add that interest into the savings account. Um, so let's say that you started with $100 and then after a certain amount of time you had earned $1 of interest. Then what they're going to do is instead of paying you that dollar of interest, they're going to put that dollar of interest into your account so now you have $101 of interest. And then the next month or year or period or whatever they decide that they're figuring out the interest again, what they're going to do is they would take that amount and then add it back into your account. Um, and so when you find that interest rate on the new amount, it's finding that same interest rate but on a higher starting value. And it all keeps adding up. And um, the book actually shows you how to do that by hand and it's really, really terrible after about two compounding periods. Um, but there's a great formula that works and this is the one we want to use. It's P with a little with a capital N there, equals P0 or P0 times by 1 plus R divided by K to the capital NK. So um, our pieces of information that we need here, P0, of course, just like before, is my starting amount or my principal. R is my annual interest rate still. T, is, or they don't use T here. Um, K N is kind of like my T, it's my time in years. And K is going to be how frequent, how many times a year my money is being compounded. So let's do some simple examples here. Let's suppose that we decide to um, make a fi put in five hundred dollars into an account. It's going to pay three percent interest, and I'm going to keep it in my account or three percent interest compounded monthly. And I'm going to keep it in my account for five for five years. Okay, if I'm going to do this, what we're going to figure out here is, let's identify what my variables are. The P0 is the starting amount. In this case, I'm starting with 500 bucks. My R is my annual interest rate, which was 3%. Be sure to change it to a decimal because we're going to use it in a formula, so 0 0.03. Capital N is how many years it's going to be in the account. In this case, I'm doing it for five years. K is how many times a year it's being compounded. If it's being compounded monthly, there's 12 months in a year, so my K is 12. At this point, it's just a matter of plugging things in the formula. So this says that P of 5, because I'm looking for what the amount of money is five years later, the balance in the account, um, is going to be equal to my P naught, which is um, $500. times in parentheses 1 plus R, which was 0 0.03, divided by K, which was 12, all to the N, which is 5 times K, which is 12. Okay. And at this point, what I want to do is I would like to figure out what this whole number value is. So all I have to do is just evaluate this and I'll have my answer for what the balance is. The key here, of course, is to make sure you know how to enter all of this fun stuff on the calculator. So let's go through the process of doing that. The nice thing of graphing, about graphing calculators is that you can type things in exactly the way that you see them. Uh, so in this particular case, I'm going to have 500 times in parentheses. So let me turn my calculator on here. 500, and I can enter that parentheses just like that. 1 plus, and then I need 0 0.03 divided by 12. 
inside my parentheses, so then close the parentheses. Then what I want to do is take that to the 5 times 12 power. So I can use this little caret button like this. Um, on some calculators, notice it actually brings it up to the power like this, so it's typed up higher than everything else. And then what you want to do is put that in parentheses and do 5 times 12 and then hit enter. And that will take everything to the 5 times 12 power. Uh, so in this case, when I do that, I get $580 and 81 cents. And that's terrific. That's exactly what I want. Um, if you, oops, to the 5 times 12. Now, on some calculators, it's not going to put it up at that higher level. So if you have one of the older versions of the TI-83 or 83 or 84, the way you're going to want to type it is just like this. You're going to type 500 times 1 plus 0 0.03, the slash for divide 12, and then you use this little caret button here, which is the exponent button. And then we want both 5 times 12 to be in the exponent. So make sure that you put those in parentheses. When you see this little caret, only what's right after the parentheses, or what's right after the caret, rather, is in the exponent. So in this case, I need both the 5 and the 12 to be in the exponent. So I need to put that 5 times 12 in parentheses like this. Do all of that out, I get 580.81. Um, do keep in mind, be reasonable. I mean, if you're getting like six, if you're getting $86,000 after five years, that's probably not very realistic for a solution. So I mean, use what you know about money and think, does that seem reasonable for five years later? Uh, if it doesn't, maybe you're having a problem in how you're entering this in in your calculator. But again, Use those parentheses. Make sure that this decimal, this is written in decimal form. You change that percentage to a decimal. And anything after my exponent button, if I want it all to be in the power, which in this case the N and the K both need to be in the exponent, be sure to use parentheses around there. That's the big key thing that's going to keep you out of trouble. Let's try um, another problem. Keep in mind that in this problem I was compounding monthly, which meant that my K value was 12. They're not always going to to do that. So let's do a slight variation on this problem. Actually, you know what? Let's just do this. Instead of compounding monthly, let's see what happens if we decide instead to compound this. Um, I don't know what, what should we do. Let's just compound it quarterly. If I'm compounding it quarterly, what, this ma what that would mean is that every three months, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and get the amount of interest that I've gotten figured out. I'm going to figure out what that interest is. That's oh, going to take me forever. I'm going to figure out what, that's, what that amount of interest is that I'm getting. And uh, hang on just a sec. Let me erase this. Oof, magic pause button. OK, um, so I'm going to change this. What I'm going to do is the same problem, but compounded quarterly. Let's see how different it is. We got $580.81 um, compounding it every month. So every month we were adding money back into the account and earning interest on our new amount. Let's see how it changes if we're only compounding quarterly. Now, quarterly means four times per year. So that's always an important note for us to remember here. So in this case, the only thing that's going to be different, P0 is still $500. My R value is still 0 0.03 for 3% interest. My capital N value is still five years, because that's how long I'm doing it. But this time, my K value is going to be um, four, because I'm compounding quarterly, which means four times every year. Uh, go through and put this. We're just plugging in values here. P5, so the balance of my account after five years, is going to be equal to my starting amount, which was 500 times by 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 4. Close the parentheses. And then in the exponent, I'm going to have 5 times 4. Keep in mind that if it's in the exponent, put it around parentheses so that you make sure that you get everything in that exponent value. Typing it in your old school calculators, 500 parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.03 divided by 4. Close the parentheses. Use your little caret button. 5 times 4 in parentheses, so both the 5 and the 4 get caught up in there. So when I type this here, it's going to be real similar. 500 times 1 plus point zero 0.03 divided by 4. Close the parentheses. 
and then I'm taking it to the um, 5 times 4 power. So 5 years, 4 times per year. And notice in this particular case, I end up with $580.59. So compounding it more frequently, compounding it every month, did give me a little bit more interest, but not a whole lot. Um, every If I did it quarterly, it was 0.59. If I did it um, monthly, it was 0 0.80. So I've got a difference of like 21 cents um, for get, adding that in. And keep in mind that the bigger that your starting amount is, um, the bigger of a difference this will make. So if we were talking about $30,000, uh, the difference between monthly and quarterly would be a lot greater. Also, um, if we were talking about a longer period of time here, we were just doing five years, let's say maybe it's a 20 or 30 year investment. Um, in those cases, the difference between monthly and quarterly makes a tremendous difference. Um, so again, in all of these compound interests, we're making a one-time investment. The money's just sitting there, but on the back end, on the bank's end, they're figuring things out on a regular basis, um, sometimes quarterly. Um, most savings accounts are, are have their interest compounded on a quarterly basis, sometimes monthly. Um, that becomes a little bit more common in um, what kind of applications, things. It's actually a little more common in annuities, which is something we'll get to next. Um, Sometimes you also will have things that are what's called compounded annually. Um, if you get a problem where it's asking you to compound annually, if you're compounding annually, what that means is that it's only, it's figure, it's adding money or value in every year, but only once a year. Um, so if you have a problem where you're compounding annually, and I think you do um, for problem that very first homework problem, K is equal to 1. So when you go through here, your value for K here and your value for K here, you're going to put 1 in for both of those values if it's talking about annual. Um, so anyway, that's the game that you play when you're trying to figure out the new balance after investing something in an account with compound interest. Uh, give those few homework problems a try and come back in for a little bit of clarification on a different style of compound interest problem.